Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Still here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll go through some of the main newspapers here in Spain and check out what is happening in the press at the moment. We'll have a look at El Mundo, El País, El Confidencial, the state broadcaster as well. And then at the end of the video, we'll go through some of the comments and check out what is happening in the comments section. Now we'll get straight into the news. And the first thing we'll have a look at today is this article here in the center. Crisis de gobierno, alarma diplomática por el daño que hace Iglesias a la imagen que tiene España en el exterior. So diplomatic alarm or concern for the damage that Pablo Iglesias is doing to Spain's image abroad. Now this is a fairly hot topic at the moment. It's also a very sensitive topic. Nobody likes having their democracy questioned. And of course, that's what Mr. Iglesias, the vice president of the government, is doing at the moment. This debate, as we know, has arisen because of something the European Union said last week, I think it was, or at least the Spanish representative of the European Union said he went to Russia and questioned Russian democracy. And of course, the Russians retaliated questioning democracy here in Spain. And Mr. Iglesias, not surprisingly, siding with the Russians. And there has also been a fairly heated debate in recent times about freedom of speech. In Spain, a rap artist in Catalonia has recently been sent to prison because of his lyrics. And of course, a lot of people are asking themselves, what are the limits of free speech? Can you say what you want whenever you want, even though somebody may get offended? Is it okay to threaten the king? Is it okay to incite violence? Those were some of the reasons I believe that that rapper was sent to prison and that is where the debate is here at the moment. Now we'll go back into the news and we can see that Madrid has decided to extend the 10 p.m. curfew even though COVID-19 infections have fallen. There was talk that Madrid was going to push the curfew back to 11 p.m., but they have decided to leave it at 10. And just below that, we can see that there's an article about an aggressive strain of the coronavirus that has been discovered in Madrid. Madrid detected dos casos de la variante más agresiva de la cepa brasileña del virus. So the Madrid community has detected two cases of the most aggressive variant of the Brazilian strain of the virus. So an aggressive Brazilian strain of the virus joining the South African and the British variants here in Spain. Now we'll scroll down a little bit and there's an article here related to something that we looked at yesterday about the Basque country. So we'll click on that one. And it is Arzac y otros 800 hosteleros vascos se rebelan contra el cerrojazo de Urcuyo. So Arzac and 800 other Basque hoteliers rebel against Urcuyo's closing of that sector. Mr. Arzac is a well-known Basque chef and Mr. Urcuyu is the Basque Premier. Now, we spoke about this yesterday, how a judge in the Basque country overturned the government's decision to close bars and restaurants in what they call red zones in the Basque country, in places like Bilbao, San Sebastián, Vitoria Gasteiz, I think also the three big cities in that part of the world. A little bit controversial, the judge is apparently against lockdowns. We saw yesterday that he loves a song by Van Morrison, which is also anti-lockdown. I think Van wrote that song last year, and it was also quite controversial in some parts of the world. And if I remember correctly, the judge also said that epidemiologists are nothing more than GPs with a course, questioning whether they should be the people that decide whether bars and restaurants are safe places or not. Now we'll leave El Mundo, we'll go to El País, check out what is happening there. We'll scroll up past the San Valentine's Day ad. We can see here that the main article that they are going with is also about Madrid maintaining restrictions, at least until Thursday. And then they're going to see if the health data warrants pushing that curfew back to 11 p.m. We'll click on this article here about the vaccines. And the headline is, Si son las nuevas vacunas que aportarán a España 100 millones de doses más. And these are vaccines that are being tested or made in Spain and they will arrive in coming months. So some good news there. Spain will have access to 100 million doses of these vaccines and hopefully the country will be able to get its vaccination plan back on track because as we know, it is going very, very slowly at the moment. But we'll have a look at some data on the vaccination plan in just a moment. Now we'll leave El País and go to El Confidencial. Check out what is happening there. We'll scroll up and have a look at the map and graph. Click on a few autonomous communities and see what's going on. As we can see, the majority of the country now is in the gray color. The dark blue color is slowly diminishing, but there are still a few areas of Spain that have a high incidence rate. The Valencian community is one, 777 cases. Andalusia is another one, 635 and Castilla y León here, 719. But if we compare the data in Castilla y León with Cantabria, which is a neighboring autonomous community, we can see the situation there completely different at 272. If we have a look at the Canary Islands, 
they're at 145. So quite a lot of difference around the country at the moment, especially when it comes to the Canary Islands and mainland Spain. And as we saw, Cantabria, the only part of mainland Spain with an incidence rate below 300. And if we have a look at the graph on the right, we can see that case numbers around the country are coming down. We can see that we have passed the third wave and the health situation around the country is improving. Now we'll scroll down and see if there's anything else that catches my attention. I saw an article before about the rap artist who is apparently supposed to enter prison today. And we can see this article here. I'll click on that one. Pablo Acel desafía al juez y se niega a entrar en prisión. Tendrán que secuestrarme. So the rap artist Pablo Hassel has decided to defy the judge and is refusing to enter prison. And he said that they're going to have to kidnap him if they want him to go to prison. So the story about a rap artist here in Spain being sent to prison because of his lyrics taking a new twist today. Now we'll leave El Confidencial now. We'll go to the state broadcaster RTVE. So we'll click on that. And we can see that RTVE now has a graph showing the vaccination plan here in Spain and how many people have been vaccinated. And the numbers still, unfortunately, not looking very good. People that have completed their vaccinations, remember that we need two doses, is only at 1.99% or 943,278 people. And people with at least one dose, 2.91% or 1,377,000. So things going very, very slowly indeed. Now we'll scroll down and see if there's anything else worth looking at here. We'll scroll past Fernando Alonso, who apparently had an accident yesterday while riding a bike, needed an operation. And we'll come down here to this one here. Estamos a tiempo de evitar la cuota ola. Los expertos piden mantener las restricciones y acelerar la vacunación. So are we in time to avoid the fourth wave of the coronavirus? The experts are asking for restrictions to be maintained and they want the vaccination program sped up. So that, of course, is the million dollar question. Can we avoid a fourth wave of COVID-19 here in Spain? Experts are calling for restrictions to be kept in place. They also want that vaccination plan to be sped up as I just mentioned but both of those things appear not to be happening. As we know the vaccination plan is very very slow we just saw the data on that and various autonomous communities around the country are easing up on their restrictions. Castilla-La Mancha has announced that they're going to reopen bars and restaurants. We saw in the Basque country the judge overturning the government's decision and Madrid is going to decide next Thursday whether they're going to push that curfew time back to 11 p.m. and give restaurants and bars more flexibility when it comes to opening times. So the experts are calling for one thing, but politicians are doing something else. So it looks as though we're going to have a fourth wave of the coronavirus, but again, I hope I'm wrong. Now we'll leave the newspapers there. We'll go into the comment section, check out what is happening here. We'll have a look at this one here from Mike. Victoria, Australia appeared to be beating the virus, but now gone back into lockdown. Is this the future? Open up, then close down after virus returns. This will be with us for many years. We got to look at how to live with it. Yeah, Mike, thanks for the comment. I woke up today to the news that Victoria was going back into some type of lockdown, or at least Melbourne. I don't know whether it's a statewide thing, but I heard that Melbourne is going into a five-day lockdown because of an outbreak they have down there with apparently a very virulent strain of the virus. All of this comes at a bad time for Melbourne because, as we know, they're in the middle of the Australian Open tennis tournament and uh, apparently crowds are going to be prohibited as of tomorrow. So things not looking good there. But what the government of Victoria has done seems to be in line with what other states in the country have also done in recent times. Western Australia also had a similar type of lockdown, at least in the Perth region. And I think Queensland had something similar a few months ago and also South Australia. So the idea down there in Australia seems to be to act quickly whenever there is an outbreak like the one that they currently have in Melbourne, close everything down and hopefully get the situation under control and therefore not having to extend the lockdown for longer periods like they had last year, when I think the lockdown in Melbourne was about four months long, so it was quite a long lockdown there. And I think you're right, we have to try to find a way to live with this virus, but everything that we've done up until now has proven that that is very very difficult. We open, we close, we open, we close, the numbers go up, the numbers go down. That seems to be the trend and it's what's been going on for the last 12 months or so, but hopefully vaccines can change that situation. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you tomorrow. Hasta luego.